God, thank you for the city of St. John. Thank you for moving on the hearts of these city council members to serve this community. Thank you for reminding all of us of the importance of not just listening to others in the community, but of reaching to you in prayer to find the best way of governing and serving the community. Move in the hearts of these council members to govern with justice and peace. And with all of us this evening, as decisions are made to serve the people of St. John as needed. In Jesus' name, I pray. I have currently Ms. Tompkins for city code violations under administration. Um, Jeff Payne more wire under election? Bye. Okay. I didn't do that, your clerk did. Been a tough weekend. <laughs> regular meeting of 9-1-2015, approve appropriation ordinance 9-15-2015 in the amount of $89,176.19. Is there any discussion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. First thing I got, um, last week Bobby got with me and asked if I wouldn't mind uh, making a list of jump cards and stuff like that that's around, so I'm going to pass that out to you. This is obviously by no means an com exhaustive or complete list. Um, these were ones that were plainly visible from the road, alleys, things like that. There, there are some places that got some vehicles backed up and stuff like that. I didn't go walking on properties and things like that to get uh, you know, run tags and stuff like that, but these are the ones that visibly don't have a tag on them, visibly expire, um, or something like that. So, um, if you read on there, most, you know, majority of them, if I knew the, the property owner's name, I included that on there. Um, but otherwise, it's just got the address with it. So, if nobody has any questions on that, um, I also included in your packets a copy of a uh, notice for uh, Officer Story's graduation. Um, I just wanted you guys to know that way, but if you would like to uh, attend that, um, it's a pretty neat ceremony and just a way to, to kind of learn about what the, our officers go through as far as their training goes and continuing education. Other than that, unless you have any questions for me, that's all I got. Tonight is the official budget hearing for the 2016 budget. So I included that in your packet, the whole thing, everything he sent to us. So I just need someone to, if you guys agree to it, then I need you guys to adopt it. And I need everyone to sign. Because before we do that, we need to open and close the public hearing. So I will open the public hearing on city's budget for any public comment.
why that's getting passed around. I just wanted to um, let you guys know that tomorrow and Thursday is the CIC symposium, and it's in Wichita. So I'll be going. I'll be going to that, and then Vicki will be going on Thursday. She was going to go yet tomorrow, but she didn't get payroll done, so we need her to stay here and finish that. So on Thursday, the only one that will be in the office will be Pam. So she's going to be closing the office down for lunch from 12 until 1, just so you guys know. We had talked uh, earlier in the year, trying to get a bid from the county for sealing our non-curb streets, East 4th, East and West 1st, Lamoreau, Broadway, up to the tracks, and then around the pool. And it was just under 18,000 square yards, and Phil Nusser told me it would be right around 20,000. He just did some quick numbers for me, and so I'd like to get it a approval to have, he said we'd have to get started on it quick, we'd have to do the uh, traffic control for them, and he said that it would be, because if they don't get started quick, we'll get a lot of bleeding and we'll get the temperatures we need to get them done. Um, and I'd like to get an approval for up to 25000 to spend on that ceiling, and it is in the budget for that. You know how much was budgeted for that? Uh, we have fifty-five thousand for Matt Slurry Seal, and then another ten grand that gets used for a special highway. Normally, we spend almost ninety thousand dollars on sealing every year. They're not doing any slurry seal this year. So, what was that slurry seal last year? Do you know the you number? Know? It was eighty. 87 or 89,000, it was just under 90,000. How many blocks was that? Do you remember? We did, let me square, right. that was about 40,000. I know it did, uh, it was about two something a, a square yard, just under $3 a square yard is what they charge us. And it covers a lot, it's just that with the renew, reduced manpower, we didn't have a chance to get the streets up to where we needed them in my eyes to do a slurry seal and I didn't want to waste the money just throwing a seal on top of something that isn't going to stay there. What about like out here on, on 4th Street? I know those potholes are... Yeah, we're going to get on that tomorrow. Are those... Is that something that continues to be a problem right in that area? Yes, and that is one of the reasons why I brought to you guys about redoing those streets is because, I mean, they're just just continue to do and that's why I want to do the seal here because that'll put some gravel in there add a little bit in and it'll fill in better than the slurry seal would which will crack out in less than a month of it being cold this will give it a little bit of texture and hopefully we'll be able to hold on to it for a little bit longer so and plus there's no curve so we don't have to go back and sweep it and run all that gravel through the sweeper and uh, tear it up here in the fall Sure, we have enough people out there to direct traffic in all the places because 
it takes quite a bit of supervision to make. You know, it's a lot of kids spread out. So. I can check into it and see what we can do for kids. I, I don't know, Mel was the one that he uh, organized that, contacted somebody. I don't know who he contacted about that when he did it. I don't know if it was just okay. the PP classes or what. So. I'll get a whole place in Cornwell and okay. Sheila Wick, who has some K's and see what we can do. Yeah. Maybe they can get some of the 4-H uh, kids and Boy Scout troops and stuff up there too. So. The situation of 406 is first as it stands right now is pretty good. Um, all the outside trash is gone, the dog poop's gone. It looks pretty nice. But I think it's just going to start over again because with him having no utilities, it's going to be horse and trash again. Whatever. So that's a thought. And then I think the number of dogs needs to be talked about. Um, one of the dogs is, took a good chunk out of the kid's leg and took after Terry on Saturday. Terry. I got bit. So one of the dogs is kind of vicious to so keep a white bird from him. So that's two things you need to worry about is the fact that he has no utilities, therefore he has no way to get rid of his trash, and the dogs. The rest of, a lot of this other stuff has been resolved. The filth, the excrement, the lumber, all that stuff is pretty well cleaned up. So I don't know what you want to do, how you want to proceed with him on these got 11 um, violations of the minimum housing here. Just because of the utilities. And trash isn't even on there. It's just going to start all over again. Hey, Doris. You can't have any more trash on there. Tell them to put it out there. We'll get it. We can't, get, we can't leave, this, leave that. Leave things out. He bags his trash and take it? If he puts it out there, we'll get rid of it. We have to, or it may, it may end up in somebody on somebody else's front porch someday. Well, that's fine. We still got a living. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Plus the dogs. I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. I say if the dog bit somebody, why was it ever back? It was the first okay. time. It just got out of jail. Got out of dog jail and probably been there what five days. Okay. Yeah, and so then Terry went down Saturday, nice enough to go on a Saturday to help him clean up the rest of his stuff. So, in my opinion, that's a vicious dog. I was out of state this weekend. I don't. Okay. Did you report it? What was that? When the dog bit you, did you report it so we could pick it back up again? No, it, it wasn't. I mean, he, he bit it down kind of hard, but I don't care for back when dogs bite you. It wasn't serious. There were no scratches or anything. It didn't yeah, penetrate much either. I still consider that a vicious dog. I don't know how many he's got. I've seen six. You thought he had ten. I count at least ten. Yeah. But there are five of them are puppies. See, he told me he didn't have any puppies. Yeah. So. Well, there's a whole bunch of identical size. I'm sure small dogs. Because the gal, that, <laughs> the lady that reported it said he had a whole house full of puppies, so he could have any. What you do about the dog before he does bite a kid? What's that? Is there something we can do to handle about? before he does buy the kid. Absent, absent a report, it's going to take the, the judge or the city attorney to, to make an order to have the dog removed. That, you can just have, have him move the dog from by the house down to the other end of, the, of his line. And <laughs> what about keep the other 11 dogs? People. Well, I don't know about them. I only bit, I I bit know, but, the one. I you know, but ordinance says you can have four. The other one seemed friendly. Yeah, that big black dog. Yeah, I think he's alright. If the council would recall that, with regard to some of these things on this list, I, I asked at our last meeting for the, the council to decide whether they want me to start prosecuting what I would call the um, the health ordinances. For the reason is, 
just about the only option is to require the individual to repair or tear down the house, uh, which, which is a bit drastic, I guess. <laughs> so if you're going to kind of do it to one house, you need to take a position about doing it to any of these houses. Um, and of course, each situation is going to be a little different. There may be a situation where you've got somebody who's just fine living in these kinds of conditions, but then the next, the next door neighbor may have somebody, uh, may have the, the, the same type of situation, but may have children. Um, so, so the council, um, I, I guess I, I want, before I start having people turn out of their houses, I, I need some kind of direction. Regarding the dog case, uh, we can certainly prosecute. You know, if I, if I know about it, when, when um, dog bites, um, the law enforcement has uh, the option when they de deem it necessary to, um, um, the statute says, use firearm or suitable weapon to destroy any rabbit or vicious dog. Um, that opens up another can of worms. I guess you almost want somebody to decide that. If, some, if a dog's biting, then, then yeah, that, that's a lot different than, than um, um, a dog not biting, but maybe um, attacking or running to the edge of, a, of the, um, the, the, the land or whatever, chasing somebody. You know, it, it, I guess it just depends um, on any situation, but I guess I'd like a little more direction before we go and, and start prosecuting people for not having... Um, you know, example, running toilets or non-functional toilets, water heaters, eating, that kind of thing. It looks to me like the majority of it stands because he didn't have any utility. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And seem working. Yeah, he didn't have any prospects of And I think this is going to be an upcoming problem. Well, it's going to, you're going to have to revisit it if you don't take care of it. It's going to come back. But, I, don't, I don't like it either, but, but the other you, deal is we got the ordinance when we go follow them, let's get them off the books. If you ain't got money to pay, to pay the utilities, you know, what do you do? Put them in a cardboard box? I don't know. Dog's already bit twice. I'd say we try and pursue the dog deal, though. That's yeah. my own opinion. Before some kid gets bit. You want to wean him down to four dogs? Huh? You want him to wean down to four dogs? I, I'm just. I don't know. That's what the ordinance says. That's what yeah. the ordinance says. The ordinance says you can have four dog yeah. dogs and name them out puppies. That's a, the one that Spike needs to go bye bye. I own yeah. dogs too, but no one bite. Yeah. You say they got ten. I, he saw 10, I saw 6, but I didn't go in the house and look for puppies, but I specifically asked him about puppies and he said he didn't have any. There was four ducks chained up outside, near as I could tell, two adults and four puppies inside, but there may be more. Yeah, the lady across the street said there was 15 at least. Well, I think if the ordinance says that they can only have four, that we need to take them down to four. I think you should. Yeah. Yeah. That's up to the council. But I know it's, it's going to be difficult for him, but he's going to have to do it. I, think. I don't know how he afford to see it. Well, if he didn't have six he dogs, he might be able to maybe a <laughs> start on a utility. I don't know. I don't know. That's a, I don't know. And I, I guess just to clarify, I'm not asking <clears throat> the council to approve um, me prosecuting any case if somebody's found with more than four dogs. Just on the, the health nuisance ordinances um, before I would, would to take to somebody to court based on the condition of their house, I want council's approval. The, the dog things, that, that's a different set of ordinances. On those situations, I just, just a, a report from LaDonna with the people that, with my witnesses, the people that got bit or the people that witnessed a vicious dog is all I would need on those types of cases. Still going to probably not get anything but worse of it. I mean, what? I, I, in the six or seven cities that our office represents, we have never had, we've never prosecuted anybody regarding those type of things. And, and, and that's 
the ordinance is adopted from state law, um, and it's in every one of those uh, code books. It's just one of those things. If somebody can live in that kind of condition, then you know maybe we let them be. Um, if they have children, usually a child in their care case is filed through district court to remove the children, and that sometimes gets the the, the people motivated to clean up their house. I mean, there, there's other mechanisms to, to, to handle those situations short of the city spending the money and the resources to try to clean it up. If the property is abandoned, certainly the city can attempt to eradicate and have the house torn down in those situations. Sometimes these houses are abandoned. What's wrong with the problem? I mean, what do you want? I mean, you can't shift them out in a cardboard box either, but I mean, I don't know what. Basically, that's what it is. Well, in that kind of situation, if they're going to lose a home, you know, if they go through municipal court, the court says yes, repair or tear down the house, uh, then they appeal the district court. They can do this all pro se without an attorney, and then we just wrapped up in court cases for the next six to eight months. Well, on my part, I will say that the owner has been pretty agreeable, has worked real fast for so maybe you can, maybe we can rely on that cooperation again for him to reduce his dog numbers. I'd say start with the dogs. And See how it is. Yeah. So who does that? You do it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell him. I think you can have any number of puppies under six months of age. Then you don't get rid of any of them. Cancers. Yeah, but I think then you have to have a kennel license or something. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Just, just uh, and then on the on the houses, you guys had tabled all that until October first because you wanted me to make a list of the houses and you wanted pictures and, and everything. Well, I agree with Marshall. Let's start with the dogs and then yeah, as long as she's still trying to be work with us or whatever on this other. Okay, then the other situation at 313 South Main is all taken care of. The trash is picked up, except there's like a shopping cart left. And a, somebody dumped a couch there. That was a, I didn't belong to those people. The neighbors brought it over. For, and uh, so it's, I was surprised. The backyard's all moved down. It's all kids are down. It's much, much better. So does it need to be condemned? I don't know. I've seen people live in ours. Seriously. And then we've got how many new ones with on it? We sent out three other letters. Well, that's 209, was not. Yeah, one of them. the wrong address. Send it to the wrong person. No, one of them, one of them the owner doesn't live here, but it's a rental place. So, so it was a rental. Someone? Yeah. So, yeah. I heard it. They sent the letter. We sent them a copy. Then we sent one for its. Yeah. And then one on Monroe. Then we sent the one, one on Monroe. So, let's see so how we sent go. three more letters out last week. That's all I have. Are got any questions? Do we need to make a motion or go ahead and pursue the dog I think just the council's direction is sufficient. Of course, thank you for all of the time. Yeah. Uh, one quick question. I neglected to put this on the new business or anything, but there was a, a question from uh, Laura Davis from the Life Program regarding the skating rink. Um, we had given a uh, life program permission to use the skating rink early. She was wondering if she needed to come back and ask again, or is that a okay to do right now because they'd like to get over there. Okay, I'll let her know that it's all right. Okay, thank you. And then I need a motion for a 10-minute executive 
concession for non-elected personnel, possible hires? So And then I make a motion to hire Chris Smith and Champ Watson at $12 an hour for maintenance, water maintenance. Second. Is there any further discussion? Motion carries 5-0. All in favor? Opposed. Motion carries 5-0. Council Mayor Two things. First one, you see on there is a demand charge. We had a we got a call a couple weeks ago from uh, Kirk Fairchild about some problems with these generator kicking off and on. And we went out. We checked everything from the switch on down all the way in. Didn't find a thing. Went out, shook everything. Couldn't find anything. Came back two days later. Called again. He says doing it again. This time they found a burnt uh, bushing on the primary side of the transformer, which was clear up inside the glass. We couldn't find it, we couldn't hear it arc, we couldn't hear anything, but it did finally show itself. And then he made the point to tell us he'd been doing it for four months, but he hadn't notified anybody. So it was on a Saturday, I was out of town, the guys changed the transformer, got everything back on, everything's running fine. He's upset about the demand charge because the demand charge got fairly high um, LaDonna's been on the phone with Greg Wright off and on the last week and Greg had kind of give her an idea of how his electric bill would look if uh, he would have had generation and we felt like just for the last month, which would have been the last billing period, to be fair with him. If he would have notified us before, you know, we would have taken care of it before, but uh, with some compensation and she has those copies and it cuts his bill about a hundred dollars. Um, gives him an average of 700 kilowatts that he would have generated. He did make comment to me right after council meeting last time. He called me in fact about nine o'clock or shortly after, not too long after we left here, and said he'd found an attorney in Wichita that was willing, he thought, to take uh, on the demand charge that the city puts on him. I had made a phone call today to, to Midwest Energy Hayes and talk to them about how they address uh, net generation or you can call it what you want but where you give and you take generation both and uh, he sent me down just this evening a copy of what their state or what the FCC has allowed them to, to, to do and so I haven't had a chance to go through it yet. We've talked to Greg on the phone. Greg's willing to come out. <coughs> And sat down with us and looked this deal over. But from the start in 2011, he went on. Uh, they went to the state house, and the state uh, put together an energy committee. Mel went down at that time and testified. Greg Wright went down, and KMU, and quite a few other municipals. And, and after a long discussion and, and pushing and pulling, why they tabled it. So it never did go anywhere. They felt like <coughs> the cities. And his complaint was that the city needed to divide that electric charge and charge him differently because he didn't want to pay for fire and police protection. He felt like living outside the city limits and he, did, he shouldn't have to pay for that. But KMU's outlook on that was the fact that it would be a horrendous undertaking to be able to try and split the charge depending on how the budgets were for the police and fire. And so it got tabled and everything went on. And we started the approach of, of the way that we're building now. And uh, Greg wants to look at it again. 
and I want to go through that stuff that I got from Midwest Energy today. I do know from talking to the guy on the phone that Midwest Energy is not near as giving to customers that uh, uh, choose to send solar or wind power generation to them. Uh, they cut the price way down. We give it uh, uh, kilowatt for kilowatt. We give it back to him at the same cost as what he pays us, which is very generous. And so Greg's willing to come out. If you want him to come out to council meeting and sit around, uh, he can. If you want us just to sit down with the mayor and trying to come to some kind of a conclusion, whether we want to change it or bring you with something different, we can do that too. Uh, all you have to do is let LaDonna or I know and we'll get a hold of Greg and we'll make that point. We know that two of you can set in on a meeting during the day, three can't. So it's whatever the council wants to do. He feels like he's unfairly treated because he is the only one that pays the demand charge, but he is a special he's a special customer compared to everybody else where he gives us back electricity. And so that's the reason the council at that time wrote it the way they did, and they wrote it off of off of a uh, uh, a deal that brought, was brought out by KMU, and all the member cities had uh, signed it and passed it, and that's what they use now. So anyway, it's um, it's whatever you decide, however you want to do it. I have also spoken with Mr. Fairchild. He stopped by the office last Friday. Um, you know, when I had some time to talk with him, and I chatted with him on Saturday morning, basically the same thing. Um, I would like to meet with Greg Wright because I would like to have better understanding of our electric contract in general and how it works. So I'm willing to do that. We can do it. We can bring him in and have to come to a meeting or however council wants to handle it. I don't care about this either. I think Bob and I were the only ones on that at the time. Okay. Um, which I'm not in favor of the demand charge either because to me it's just like, well, we're going to lose this much money if he generates, so we're going to charge him this demand charge so that we don't lose any money. It's about how that comes across. I think the city's outlook on that, from what I understood talking to Mel and what I've read, uh, just looking through the stuff that, that, that Mel had left, is the fact that there are certain times of the year that we would collect no revenue whatsoever for maintaining these transformer any service and that. We felt like we should have some compensation to take care of it, the meter and that stuff, and that's the reason it was done that way. I will tell you that, that Midwest Energy, when they do it, they give back their customers 150% uh, of the wholesale rate, which in this case would be about four and a half cents. Right now we give them whatever the rate is for the month. They also cut off any carryover at the end of the month. They don't let you carry it. We carry his carryover now from January 1st to December 31st. And at the end of the year, then the slate's wiped clean. Uh, Midwest Energy does not do that. He had made the comment one day that he thought he'd be treated more fair if he went on Midwest Energy and he was 200 yards away. You know, and, and right or wrong, I don't know. But it doesn't sound to me like it would be a much better bargain than what he's getting here. A lot of times these bills you know, it's considerably less. I mean, it, if he does hit a high demand when it's really hot, we pay a demand charge when it's hot, too. I mean, we all get stuck with it. So, you know, I don't know what your answer is. Uh, I think Greg would have some good insight on it as to uh, what would be fair. I, I also but, feel the same way you do, Troy. That the, 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 like 200 to 250 bucks a month. It's $12.50 a KW, depending on what the maximum KW is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it but it amounts to about 200 to 250 bucks a month. Uh, the highest one I saw was 122, I think, for this, this year. It was 129. We 129. Don't do okay. Yeah. Okay. Everyone gets a demand charge. It's just that we don't spill it out on our bills. Everyone pays like you pay 10 cents for your electricity. He pays five cents. So his demand charge is making up that extra five cents that you and I already pay with our 10 cents. That's how Greg explained it to me. Every customer on the system pays a certain amount of demand based on what the energy charge is for the right. month. And it's all based off of excess energy of how high the load is going and, uh, and what they charge us. So it's just a little different form of charging it back. Right. Uh, you know, I and, and she's right, Greg, Greg can do a whole lot better job of explaining this than... Well, I think he needs to, I think we need to have a meeting and have him come in on okay. the agenda for our next meeting. Or I, I'd actually yeah. like to suggest that we a special meeting because I have a feeling that it's going to be a lengthy conversation and I think it would be good given the complexity
complexity of the issue that we're talking about if we could just focus on that one thing? If we could start later in an afternoon instead of in the evening, he's, he lives in Topeka, that would give him time to get home a good time. You know, if we start, say, at 4 o'clock some afternoon or something like that, if everybody could get uh, by by then. work for being here for the next 20 to 30 days. Okay. I uh, guarantee that. So. You make the call. It makes no difference to me. I guess I would talk to him and see if he can do it and how he wants to do it. Thank you. He's flexible. He can do it whenever he does want. But I would like him to come out and actually break this demand charge down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, list sure. it out. Sure. Like what it is. Yeah. What percentages and everything. Okay. Just want me to schedule that? I, yeah. Skip Thirty yeah, days out. You, we work through it. If we start it early. I don't. I mean, we need to at least go to the. Fifteenth. I'm gonna guess thirty days before I could really say that I could take off. I mean, in the middle of the afternoon. Well, and that timing probably would be done because Corey would be here then and could be involved in the meeting as well. That may not be bad either. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do that just before we start? Scheduled yeah. in the middle of October sometime. Middle of October, the first of November. Yeah. So do we need to make a motion on the other deal? As far as um, back that's up to you. I mean, that's the way that Greg had figured it. That was a compensation he was going to allow. And last this month he got a ten. It was that's a, it was about ten on his demand charge. He usually the year before that it was like six point eight three. Uh, there's no way to tell what his demand would have been because the, the problem, it flickered. It flickered on and it flickered off. It flickered well, on. I understand so it, we but it's all based on temperature, too. So Yeah, all, all he's asking all is All I'm asking is we have to have a motion to be able to, to, to correct the bill. I think probably be a good idea. You've done okay. it for everybody else. Right? Yeah. But he's happy with it. He, yeah, he, okay. he actually, we talked, and I, it's actually his numbers. I said, what do you think? It is. I've got it right here. His total bill was three fifty eighty one, and and we dropped it down to two fifty. I don't know how I did this, but two fifty two fifty two. Yeah, and that took some off the the demand, and it also took some off the energy because it gave him seven hundred kilowatts, I think, of generation. Is that yeah. off the August bill. Then? That's off the the August bill. Now the system didn't get fixed until September fourth. So more than likely, you guys are going to have to probably adjust some off of the September bill because it, it you, the 15th, bill goes from the 15th, 15th to the 15th. 15th. So, so I mean, more than likely, yes, you're going to have to we're going to have to redo it on the September bill too because it would have taken. Well, a I'm going to make a motion to adjust Kurt Fairchild's electric bill from 35081 to 252.52. Bill. Second. That's about a 30% reduction. That's mm -hmm. pretty fair. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by vote. The other thing is we've got uh, we've got about three blocks of line yet to build on the east side circuit that feeds a uh, good share of the school. It comes around and goes well, basically, from the skate rink behind my house goes east to Menaces, north a couple blocks behind the rest home, comes in and feeds the rest home transformers, ends up at Mark's, right at Mark's house, and along there on 5th Street, what's in between in between 4th and 5th, it'd be in this area right in here. All of these lots are tracks. When, when this line was built in here in the 50s, there wasn't anything built in there. Since then, there's been two homes built in there. George Casting's house put on the corner out here. There's a garage set here. We've got this block is completely closed in where the city only has access for easement for utilities, but there's fences built another 20 feet past our light poles back to where the edge of the properties are. Down here in this block, this half a block from uh, the school library back to the street on Pearl, it's all closed in. It's the same way. We had a line running through there. We've removed a lot of it. The tree fell down on it. We cut it loose and fed it back across from here. I want to tie this back up and bring it across here, but the only way to do it and really do it right is to do it with insulated wire. There is, they do make some, some uh, 
some wire that we can hang in a basket, basically, and it's insulated and it won't take up but about this much room. Set the poles, sag it in. There's three blocks in here, about 1,200 feet, and the cost of the wire is about $7,000 plus the tax. That's really the only two places in the whole city that we really can't get into to build, but we're going to destroy some yards and stuff if we don't. We can stretch this out. This this spacer cable can be hung in longer distances than what normal four on copper can, and or four on aluminum, and and that way we get in and get in behind the fences on the edge of the properties, get it set where it should be, get it tied back up. So how much difference is there in the cost? It's about twice as high. It's about twice as high. This is custom cut to the footage you want, and this is the only place we'd ever use it. But we've and we're doing that just because we don't want to we can't, the yard up. Or? No, we can't get in there to cut trees or anything. We have no right. The only thing we have is just an easement for those poles. Oh, okay. We don't we don't have any alley access. Nothing. Okay. So and it crosses a garage down here on the corner, right south of George Casting's house. So we have to jog it back and forth in order to put overhead line in, we'd have to set about three different guys to pull it back and forth and get it straightened up. This way we can just swing it around, take it down through there and top it back up and it's done. And also as a second feed, to feed the school should should something happen and we lose part of that in a storm, we can feed from the highway back into there and feed the school and the rest home where we can't do that now. So, And the money's in the budget in the rebuild to do that. So it, the cost of the wire is about 7000 and plus whatever the tax is. So it's about an eight week wait. So if we're going to order it, I need to order it now. It won't be here until probably close to the 1st of December. I'll make a motion we buy 1,200 feet of wire or whatever for $7,000 plus tax. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I just wanted to let everybody know there is a, a city attorney's meeting on October 9th. So that will be attending. It's no cost to anybody for the city. It counts as my continuing education uh, requirements. So I would, our office will just pay the 80 whatever and uh, expenses but just to let you know the hot topic is uh, one of the topics is health care or health ordinance the nuisance ordinance we were talking about when uh, yeah. Doris was here so <laughs> we'll see get what, educated what, what you say okay is there any business do you know anything on entryway what the hold up is or why they haven't done anything can you contact them? And if nothing else, ask them if they could just at least get out there and clean the dead stuff up. Anything else? Did, did they get the $500? They should have. They should have. Yeah, because we sent it to them. We sent it to them. Yeah. Business. Whole business. Stuff for County Trash Service. Where we at with it? I missed last week. But I see we got another complaint in here. But. Um, there was discussion, and Terry talked about you know what they're doing. We've changed some procedures to where we are now faxing the complaints directly out to the trash company um, so that they can deal with them. Um, what am I missing? I don't remember. Marshall, you wanted me to put in the packets the cities that produce their own solid waste. Do 
did you um, find out from these cities how many trucks, how much staff? Mm -hmm. We never. I did it anyway. I just know at one time it. I think it was brought up when we done our budgeting that we were talking about it, okay. and this was all that I'd found on it. Terry, is there something you can do with, I know that one trash truck is extremely loud. Which one? I don't know, typically I'm trying to sleep when it. The old mag? Yeah. That's probably what it is. You know, I, uh, I checked that with a, with a view meter, you know, measures decibels. And I, I was about 75 feet away from it, and uh, and it was about oh the noise level was about 75 on the on the A scale, which is which is the one you use for measuring noise. And uh, 75 is it's kind of loud, but it's but it's it's more like a loud conversation. But what you what you hear a lot is is a hydraulic pump. Although, uh, I probably I probably need to uh, probably I don't know whether I can add another muffler without chopping its head off or not. Is that the same one you got to back off the mile if you're behind it on the highway? What's, it, what's that? Is that the same one you got to back off a mile if you're on the highway so you don't kill somebody? What do you mean? Smoke? Uh, we fixed that. We had a we had a uh, air filter that didn't get changed. You changed the top one, didn't change the bottom one. The white one was smoking today when it went by big time. That would have been the same truck we're talking about. <coughs> I just put, I put a turbo on that thing about a year ago, and I have been, I've followed it around, and I haven't really seen it smoking any more than, uh, than about any other, except the automatic transmissions, they will, they will smoke way worse because they've got, they've got to get up engine speed in order to be able to shift, and you're sitting there in the first gear, and you're running the motor, and you're running the motor up, and the fuel's come, the fuel come faster than you want. And then, and then when it shifts up in the second, uh, it still smokes some. You get up in the third gear, and the smoke pretty, pretty much is eliminated. Uh, you'll see smoke when we, when it packs. Uh, it's just like, it's like any other truck. You rev up the engine, it's going to smoke. Does the, the, pic, the picture that, that was uh, was on Facebook was was when they were packing, and uh, and that's that's when we brought it over, discovered that air, one air filter was a change. But it, it might I don't know. A lot of what you hear is, is uh, like I said, it's. PTO and a pump. The pump winds in every one. And you put it, you put it under pressure, and I'm not sure uh, how I can avoid that. Terry, could it be a possibility that the, the hydraulic pump has got too much clearance in it, and you're having to rev it up so high to no. get it the pressure up? No, no. Uh, that's a that's a 50 gallon pump meter on that truck. Yeah, but if it had if it was more, that it truck wouldn't be. Uh, uh, should it should be uh, that pump is. Uh, I replaced it probably a year or so ago. No, it's just it's just that when when those big cylinders on that packer work, I mean there's there's a huge volume of fluid going through there, 
and the pump has to it has to be we don't we don't run it wide open by any means but we'll run it about you know what I'm saying maybe half or five eighths throttle I'm wondering maybe at, at five o'clock in the morning that somebody isn't maybe running it faster than what you think it is. Well, I think at we're five o'clock in the morning there's no other noise in the town. It's pretty yeah, quiet we're, out. Yeah, we're out. We're about the only noise out there. And I mean, if you know this complaint was because it's picking up trash at Dillon's or whatever, yeah, it's going to echo really bad right around this area yeah, at five o'clock you know, in the morning. You know, we've been we've been doing that same route for 16 years, and it's the first time we've actually heard anybody say anything about that. But I mean, I know when they pick mine up before daylight at my place, it echoes off my building and my house. Yeah. And it's typically 5:30, anyway, 6 o'clock. Well, well, I mean, anyway, we have a route. The reason we go, we I've changed it so we go back, to, so we go back to Dallas. But. Uh, we have to get in there before all the Dillons gets all their all their delivery trucks in there. Okay. Uh, actually, is, actually, this is the what, third meeting now that we've been addressing this situation. How many complaints do we have against the right now within the last six months? Well, I can I can try to quiet them down. Be five. Terry's answered all of them without the actual complaint. Well, my director wants to do an assumption that we do have a thing that we can, that contract can come back up for review.
Okay, I think that the council's agreed that we will table this until next next meeting and finalize discussion at that time. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Being no other business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Meetings adjourned.